Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the War on Tears series. I'm recording this as a voiceover because otherwise me handling these extrusions who are going to deafen you. So uh, yeah, the extrusions have arrived for the Doom Cube upgrade and in total I think there are 18 extrusions that I'm currently showing you. So uh, yeah, rounded ones and uh, two more of the same length but regular 2020s and combine that with the 2020 Misumi ones those are going to be the fake 4040s of the Doom Cube and also have extrusions for the Doom Cube store so four extrusions for that and two uh, 1.2 meter long extrusions for the uh, Enrage Rapid Project's uh, carrot warehouse for mounting that on the wall I talked about that in the last episode I also have these hinges these are for the doors and yeah, I ordered four of those because, uh, yeah, I could. I only need two, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. I started uh, working on the extrusions. They need to be tapped and they need to have uh, holes drilled on them for uh, wrench access hole for blind joints. I am tapping them with an M6 tap. That is kind of necessary for this uh, standard of 2020 extrusions. And uh, yeah, I encountered this before, if you've been a long time watcher of the series, you might remember the first extrusions I got for the Boron 2. And uh, yeah, they were of the same standard, and I had to tap them with an M6 after tapping them with an M5 and that not working well. So uh, yeah, it's kind of a similar situation here. But uh, yeah, I'm starting with an M6 directly this time. Now uh, you'll notice that these are in silver, I will have to get them painted, either I will just paint them myself with some spray paint or I might get them professionally painted as well. I know a guy who will owes me a favor so I don't know about that but that's a chance. Another option is covering them with uh, matte black vinyl which is also an option but uh, yeah I'd rather have them painted or paint them myself so I don't know, we'll see about that. So uh, I will continue with tapping them and drilling them and uh, yeah, later in the video we will figure out uh, either the paint or the vinyl or whatever else it is. The panels started arriving, so here they are. The, these are the acrylic panels, so this thick one, uh, it's for the front of the Nevermore air filter and these are the sides of that. Below that we have the polycarbonate sheets for the front door of the Doom Cube. So uh, you'll see that these are cut with a blade instead of laser cut like the rest of them. They said they can't laser cut polycarbonate so uh, that's why it's like that. I'll probably deburr that some, uh, somewhat because uh, yeah, it's kind of ugly. But uh, it's not going to be visible once it's in the door anyway so it's not a big deal. And here are the top and bottom panels. In the last episode I said I wasn't sure if I was going to get these laser cut or not in a custom shape that is they always laser cut and uh, yeah I did so you can see the handle on both sides that's meant to make it easy to remove these and uh, yeah I also did the corners here just for clearance and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with how these turned out so that's uh, yeah again I'm pretty happy with that And uh, on this side here, I have some PVC foam panels. This, these are for the Nevermore again. And uh, yeah, it, I chose these because these are really easy to cut and they're also pretty cheap and easy to source as well. And uh, they won't be visible, at least not that much. You can see one of these from the behind the baskets in the Nevermore filter, but not that much so uh, yeah they should work pretty well and these are the uh, composite panels for the uh, doom cube so uh, yeah, I'm lifting two here so you can see the uh, construction here as I said it's two sheets of aluminium and in between there is a VPE so uh, yeah as I said everything is now here these are and by these I mean the acrylic panels they are cut pretty well, the PVC foam, I'm going to cut them myself anyway so it doesn't matter. But with the uh, panels here, the composite panels, uh, I think they are a few millimeters too big, which might be a problem. 
I'll, I'll see about that. I didn't actually measure them that well. I just used a tape measure, but it, they feel like they're a little large, like a couple of millimeters, which could be a problem. But uh, we will see uh, when I actually start building the cube. And uh, yeah, worst case scenario, I can probably just uh, grind it down or something. But uh, yeah, again, we will see uh, when I do the cube. So the insulation is now here as well. So as I described in the last episode, it's this stuff, 13 millimeter thick rubber insulation. It's kind of soft, I guess it's foamy in there, and that's what gives the insulation. I went with the non-reflective type, so there is no reflective uh, tape on this. I really don't like how that looks. I know that's theoretically better, but I still expect this to be good enough, so uh, yeah, I didn't bother. And uh, this is adhesive backed, so that's the yellow stuff here. So uh, hopefully I won't need any other method of attaching this to the panels, but obviously we'll see. Sometimes with these types of things, the adhesive is garbage, but no way to know before trying, so we'll see. So uh, the board situation. In the last episode, I mentioned I was considering switching to the duets. So uh, I was considering using two duet Wi-Fi's with clipper. I never intended to wrap wrap firmware, but I don't know, maybe that was a point of confusion because I didn't mention that. But uh, still, that was the plan. But I changed my mind and I changed my mind again. So the first time I changed my mind, I decided to not use the Dwight Wi-Fi at all. And uh, use one of the SKR Mini, SKR 1.3s that I have that's still working from my uh, Boron 2 on this. And uh, for the other one, I, want, I was planning on using the SKR Mini E3 V2.0. I have two of these, I ordered two, one for the SMUF and another one for the MPCNC. Well the uh, SMUF is cancelled as you all know and the MPCNC I ended up using a different board so I have two of these lying around so it just made sense to use it and I'm still going to use it. But I'm not using the SKR 1.3 anymore, that's what's changing and for that I'm using a, a clone with uh, Wi-Fi. The reason I'm using uh, Duet Wi-Fi in this case is, well, there are a few. First of all, this is uh, known to be uh, reliable, so there is that. But also, the GPIO pins here, that's a huge plus in my uh, use case. Uh, if you follow the series long enough, you know that I'm using uh, a Maple Mini for the skirt buttons that I have, the 12 of them. And uh, yeah, it works, but it's really unreliable, so I needed a different solution for that. And the GPIOs on this is just really useful. I'm using that setup on my Voron Zero, which I'm using because I'm using a genuine Dwight Wi Fi there. In this case, I'm just probably just going to buy the clone here because it's cheaper, but I did buy the genuine one back in the day as well. And another advantage is this daughter board header. I already have a PT100 Max31865 daughter board for the Duet Wi Fi, so I can just plug it in there. And uh, yeah, that's genuine, this is clone, but it's, uh, it should still work. And that means I don't have to use the separate module that I have, and yeah, hopefully it should still be reliable. And uh, yeah, that's basically the reason I'm using a Duet Wi Fi for one of the MCUs and the other one, the Mini E3 V2.0. This is basically because I already have this, and this, well, the, for the reasons I explained. You might ask why I'm not using two Mini E3 V2.0s since I have two of them. Well, that means in total I'd have eight drivers, and I need nine because of the Enrage Rabbit Project's carrot feeder. And uh, yeah, I need another driver, so that's the reason I'm using a different board and. Duet Wi-Fi seems to work the best for my requirements, so I'm going to order one of these. Well, for the Doom Cube, I have to tear this down, and since I don't have anything else, I guess in this episode it's now time to tear this down, and I don't know, maybe we'll spot a few problems here and there as well, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's start tearing this down. I tore the V2 down a decent amount, so here it is. Remove the gantry, remove the panels. Try to keep everything that's going to be useful in the next build here and the stuff that's not going to be useful here. But I'm pretty sure there's some useful stuff in here still. Plus, the, obviously, I also need these, so that's not the definitive, it's just the initial sorting. And uh, I was plan considering replacing this extrusion because it was bent, but 
yeah, I think it's still uh, good enough, so I'm not going to. The reason I started filming is here is the, the other SKR 1.3 that died here. And uh, someone asked, so I should probably show them. Hopefully they will be visible. They, the fuses, actually I should probably just remove them. I might shoot it like this. The fuses, as you can hopefully see, are not blown. So that's not the issue. Something else keeps killing that board. And uh, as I left as a comment in that video, my bet is one of the step six there. <laughs> I forgot I did this. This is the hot end heater. I planned it for just regular KKs and then changed my mind and added the terminal, but, and it's fine and everything, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not the world's most elegant solution. I forgot how many screws this thing took. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I forgot about this. This was many months ago when I was first doing the 2.4 upgrade. I broke this part and didn't have a working 3D printer, so I uh, super glued it together with the intention of uh, replacing it as soon as I got the printer running again. And uh, so never did, obviously. I removed my Raspberry Pi and uh, I thought this could be used to someone. If you have one of these heat sinks and you find it difficult to mount it with the other heat sink part in the back, well, the solution is pretty simple. You just grab uh, M2.5 standoffs and screw them into the heatsink and then just use screws to mount it through the other side. And uh, so far, this is the only easy way i found to mount this type of heatsink, but it works really well. So I played with the cat model a bit more and this is what I have. I'll explain this area in a bit but that's probably not going to happen that's just an idea i had but uh, overall you can see the things that changed i modeled all of the electrical components on the top and on the bottom so uh, yeah we have the power supplies terminal blocks for uh, live neutral and earth and uh, there's a terminal block here for a breakout too so it's easier to do wiring as well and uh, there is one here as well. I don't remember why I put that there, but I know I had a reason. Of I'm sure I'll remember it as soon as I stop recording. Uh, I also put the idlers here on this side. You'll notice that these are meshes. That's, well, imported from meshes at least. That's uh, because I did, they are not modeled in the CAD release. Maybe they are out by now. I know the CAD file keeps getting updated, but... The one I have at least doesn't have them, so they're not modeled. And uh, again, I'll get to this, but on the top, uh, we have the two SKRs here. These are the 1.3s, but as I said, I'm going to use the Mini E3 V2.0 for one of them. I just uh, only had this model in stock, and uh, I'm not using that f for layout, it's just for, uh, just for a demonstration anyway, it doesn't really matter and put the Raspberry Pi here as well. So, uh, this board. I designed that in uh, easy EDA as usual. So, yeah, this is that board. And uh, this is the replacement to this board that I had. And uh, the differences are, I just relocated some connectors and changed a few things. I'll go into this in a bit more detail, but uh, for those of you who don't follow the, who didn't follow this series for a while, this is a board I had for breakouts and from this on this side I had a DB15 here, a 17W2 and a DB9 here. Those are uh, basically that serially looking cable. The, the, the DB9 is exactly that, but 17W2 is a bit different, but uh, yeah, from the outside they look kind of similar. And uh, I use those cables to wire up to three boards. So uh, yeah, for example, this is behind the bed. It has the bed power connectors here, the mains AC stuff, and uh, term thermistor inputs here. Also had a PT100 input that I never used, and I, I removed it from the new board. And the Z limit switch because that's near it, and two LEDs for the layer fan and the hot end fan, just so you can see them working. Uh, if they're getting power or not is kind of what I mean. So if the fan died, but they're still getting power, you know that it's not a firmware issue or anything like that. It's a dead fan. 
And uh, yeah, only reason I added those back then is because I had spare pins on the DB9. This is the tool headboard. This sits behind the extruder motor. And uh, again, it's just a breakout. I modified this a bit in my current version and I'm using terminals for the hot end. And uh, yeah, I did a weird mod for that. That doesn't look that great, but it's not visible, so it doesn't really matter. But other than that, I'm still using this, and this is where the 17W2 goes to. And this is where the DB15 goes to. It has the X motor, Y motor, or AMB motors, whichever you prefer. And the uh, X and Y limit, uh, limit switches here. And the uh, uh, DHT22, I think was the name of it. Uh, temperature and humidity sensor that I never managed to get it to work. And that thing, and the uh, three pins for uh, GPIO expansion, just in case I want to, because I again had the pins. So uh, yeah, these three ports I'm con going to continue to use, I'm not going to replace them. And this was the board in the electronics chamber that I used for the breakout. And uh, yeah, I'm replacing that with this. And uh, th the few differences are, first of all, uh, this also is now an electrical distribution block for DC only obviously. So uh, from the bottom electronics chamber we will get uh, power to this area. So three wires for 24 volts, five wires for ground in total, and one for 12 volts, one for five volts. And uh, I'm going to use terminals here, not this connector, but it has the same pin spacing and that's the one I could find, that's why I use that. And SSR will connect here. I'm probably going to use a KK or a JSTXH for uh, most of the pin headers here. And uh, yeah, if if it doesn't work, that's what I'll use the uh, pin headers because they're the most compact. But uh, that's the model I have. So again, that's what's going on there. And the uh, bed board. So uh, this board. This will still be mounted behind the bed, so it needs to travel down with the rest of the stuff and then uh, route from the bottom electronics chamber. So uh, yeah, that's why it's facing that way, but uh, the rest of the connectors are facing inwards. The tool headboard uh, 17W2, that's sticking out right in the middle, so right here. And uh, the controls are different with Fusion. Uh, it will just go through here and if I'm not using this middle thing that I'll explain in a second, this will be in the center, so it will just go down that. And this uh, DB15 connector, that's for the uh, gantry, so this, that will travel down a direct chain, so uh, it's facing to that side so it can go down and up and into the board. And um, yeah, that's the routing for that. And uh, yeah, as I said, it has the breakouts for the 24 volts, 5 volts, and everything else you need for all of the electronics. That's kind of the idea here to minimize uh, wiring. And also has the entire breakout, and also has the Max31865 mount here for the CJMCU board I'm using. So it won't just uh, stick and it won't just be flapping around in there. It will be mounted properly this time. And uh, yeah, this pen header will run to the Raspberry Pi. Again, I'm planning to use uh, KKs for these, and if they don't work, XHs, but probably KKs will work this time. I tried to space them out well this time. I had problems with that before, like for example, they didn't work that well in this board, for example, because uh, there wasn't enough spacing between the pins and things like that, but uh, yeah, I think it will work now. And uh, you'll notice I also have the BAT85 diode mounted here, that's again to do the wiring a bit easier and from this the probe will be run to the MCU and uh, the other two wires for the probe are the 24 volt and the ground so they're just run from the 24 volt and the ground of this board and uh, yeah that's the idea with this I'm, I might just do a few more polishing touches to this before I order this, I haven't ordered it yet but uh, yeah I think this will be a uh, good addition to, uh, to the electronics chamber. This is 100 by 100 millimeters, which is basically the largest you can order from PCBWay without paying extra. So I can't make this larger, but maybe I can change a few things like with the terminals, for example, the pins 
may need to move and yeah, I need to figure out stuff like that, but mostly this will stay the same. But uh, going back to the cat here, uh, yeah, I guess it's time to explain this. I'm just going to show it here. It's this thing. It, I know it looks ugly, it's not finished, and as I said, I'm probably not going to use this, but the uh, thing is, with the Doom Cube model here, you'll notice that I don't have the Nevermore filter sticking out from the side anymore. And uh, yeah, what's going on is it's in this, so uh, would we get rid of the panels and the installation as well, I guess. So this is the way it sits in there, so I don't know if there's any problem with gravity there or not. I, this is just some idea I'm playing with, I didn't really check everything, but uh, yeah, it, it could work well. And this would also allow me to keep the uh, Z motors in this area as well, which means I'll have a bit more room for activities in the top electronics chamber, which is nice. And uh, yeah, if this works, it will be nice, but I don't know right now. But uh, going back to the Doom Cube here. There is one thing I forgot to mention, and uh, assuming I'm not doing this, which means the Z drives need to be in the top electronics chamber, there was a problem with it interfering with the uh, bottom legs that I was planning on using on the top as well to have nuts there to be able to mount an extrusion to mount uh, an Rage Rabbit Project's carrot feeder. So uh, yeah, they were interfering with that, and uh, I designed, I edited the design a bit so that they won't interfere anymore. Not. Uh, I thought I opened that. So uh, yeah, I modified the feed for that. So uh, yeah, the nut in this case is just uh, more compact. It it barely clears the Z drives. I tested it on the CAD model. It seems to fit. So uh, that's the difference. Plus. Uh, because of the 2020 extrusions I'm using, I mentioned this when I was tapping them, I'm using M6 taps, which means I'll need M6 screws, which means these holes were too narrow, so I also widened them and did this nut area for an M6 nut as well, even though uh, I guess I could use an M5 there as a feed, but uh, just to keep the screws the same, I did it for an M6. So uh, that's another change from the... Uh, stock doom cube so i keep doing little changes like that here and there so i'm sure there will be more by the time you see this video i drilled the wrench access holes as you can see and uh, yeah that means they are now tapped and drilled which means they're ready for uh, painting but uh they will, these will wait for a while and we will deal with that in the next episode so remember the audio issues at the beginning of the video well, I got a new microphone to combat that, but uh, turns out that also has some problems, so I have to do this as a voiceover as well. So uh, yeah, at this point I was just complaining about being tired because I had to spend the past six hours organizing the workshop, don't worry about that, but uh, yeah, you can see that I tore down the printer and separated them into kind of groups-ish, and you just saw the electronics, these are the Enraged Rabbit Project parts and the uh, cables which uh, I didn't do any sort of sorting with them yet I will but uh, that will be later I just threw them in there because I don't know which ones I'm actually going to use and which ones I'm not going to use so uh, yeah it was just easier to do that and then do the sorting after I'm done and uh, in this box we have the Voron 2 parts that I'm not going to use I didn't put these in their correct places or throw them in the trash or whatever uh, because uh, I'm not 100% sure which, I'm, which ones I'm still going to use or not, but it's unlikely, so that's why they're there, except that rubber tape, which I'll probably use. I now also have these 0 0.9 degree stepping angle uh, LDO motors, these are for the gantry. These have two advantages, one being their high temperature, which is good for Doom Cube, and it's overall nice, and two, they have a 0 0.9 degree stepping angle, which is uh, more important in my opinion. I am currently using the OMC bomb motors on my gantry. In the past I tried a mod like this before as well, if you follow the series long enough you know about that. But uh, they didn't work really well, those LDO motors, they were also LDO. But apparently these work better. And these are the screws I removed from the Voron 2. As you can see there are a ton of screws there. 
and uh, keep in mind the entire gantry is in one piece and the Z drives etc so that's not even the entirety of the screws so uh, there are a ton of screws there you can see that and unfortunately I didn't sort them in any way so that'll be fun wanna live stream? no I'm kidding and that's almost it for this video but uh, there's one more thing and that is I ordered some parts from a 3D printing company that's just to accelerate the process because I don't have a working 3D printer at the moment and some of the parts, if I have them before I can get my Voron Zero working, uh, it will definitely accelerate the project. So yeah, yeah, I ordered some parts for that and I also ordered some parts because there was a minimum order total. But uh, yeah, I, when I ordered them, it they said they would ship on the 12th, now they're saying they'll ship on 26th and they keep delaying it. So. Uh, who knows when they will arrive. The biggest reason I placed this order was this stop block. That's for the NPCNC, not related to this series, but I broke one of them and uh, well, yeah, I need a replacement for that ASAP and without that I can't get the NPCNC working. So uh, yeah, that's the reason I placed that order and basically because I was placing an order for this, I wanted to place an order for the rest as well until I I got to that minimum order total, so that's basically what's going on. But uh, yeah, I ordered the uh, Enrage Rabbit Project's uh, Galileo filament sensor, so uh, this stuff. The reason I ordered this is again just so I can assemble it uh, faster, and I ordered these in MJF just to, just for fun really, not, not that it really matters, but it was cheap enough. And uh, I also ordered the uh, uh, motor mounts. The Z motor mounts, that the new style. I have the old style ones. If you follow the V2 enough, you know that. And uh, yeah, I also just super glued one together as I showed. And the others are in okay shape, but they're still the old style, which is pretty weak. So uh, yeah, I ordered the new type just to again reach that minimum order. And this thing called an extrusion shoe, that's the mount for the Enrage Rabbit projects. Uh, carrot warehouse uh, filament uh, spool holder slash filament buffers as I described in the last episode I plan to mount them to the wall and to do that I'm going to mount them to extrusions and uh, this is this will just attach to the end of the extrusions and it will let me mount them to the wall with just two screws in total and uh, yeah that's the plan with that and again I chose that because well I can print it uh, yeah, it made sense to just order it. Now, uh, I might have to order another set of parts from these guys in the future as well, depending on what I end up doing for the Doom Cube. I mean, I'm, I don't like ordering from uh, other 3D printers, because, I mean, I have two 3D printers, but uh, right now none of them are working, and yeah, if uh, there are some parts that may or may not be able to be printable on the Boron Zero and depending on that I might still have to order those parts from these guys or some other 3D printing company, I don't know. So uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Not a fan of that as I said, but that's kind of the only solution at the moment, I think. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.